Volvo has offered a rugged off-road estate car since the mid-1990s and has nearly had the market to itself. Yes, there has been the Subaru Legacy Outback, but sales of that car were hamstrung by its petrol-only range of engines for a long time, it only getting diesel options more recently. With the onset of a backlash against cars that drink from the black pump, Volvo has gone the other way and fitted a petrol engine to its most expensive estate car meaning it now offers greater powertrain variety than its closest rivals, the Audi A6 Allroad and the new Mercedes E-Class All-Terrain. Quite a lot has changed since Volvo launched its first off-road estate, not just the popularity of that a full-size SUV. But the Swedish firm has managed to maintain its position in the market by offering cross-country, badged XC, versions of the V70 estate. Its replacement, the V90 Cross Country has a raised ride height, an off-road mode and exterior body cladding in black plastic or painted in the exterior body color of the car for a bit more money. Instead of the more usual diesel that is common in a car of this type, Volvo has put its highest output 2.04 cylinder petrol into the most expensive V90 cross country you can buy. With 316 bhp, the T6 is a lot faster on paper than the D5 power pulse dropping the 0 to 62 miles per hour time to 6.3 seconds. All of what we've concluded about the diesel car still applies to this new T6. It still has a more supple ride than the V90 on which it's based, meaning it smooths out the initial shock of sunken drain covers with aplomb and is relaxing in general. When pushed, it will roll to a greater degree, but that seems a worthwhile trade-off given the raised ride height and higher levels of comfort the cross-country provides. The important bit is the new engine. Much has been written about Volvo downsizing its engines, however, the main point is it now uses the same engine size for all models in the range, increasing power output through the use of different forced induction systems. This D6 runs a supercharger for when the engine is running at low revs, with a turbo taking over at higher revs. The idea is that both systems, on their own, have limitations, but by combining the two on one engine you can mitigate them.